This is Drom Shekasuto. Baruch Hashem. So, it's written that Abraham, Abraham, our father, he believed in Hashem, he had faith in the Creator, but he felt that it was a charity from the side of the Creator to let him, to let Abraham believe in him, in the Creator. He recognized that his faith was the result of the divine will of the Creator to reveal himself to him. And like that it's written also on King David that he said, Atato mich gorali. You were supporting my destiny to believe in you. The greatest gift of being a believer is such a blessing and it should put all of our lives in proportion. Because many times certain things take place in our lives. We must live in an apartment, we're dealing with challenges, with difficulties, with obstacles, with hard relationships. We're finding ourselves facing situations that are overwhelming. But the pressure that we're experiencing he is the main enemy that makes us fail in our life's challenges. If we in those situations would have our mind set stable, we would be able to think about it, to pray about it, to invest time in planning, in thinking, then we wouldn't come to wrong decisions, we wouldn't fail so many times in life. People are saying, why does rich people stays rich and poor people stays poor? Because rich people, they have time to look for a good deal. They have enough money to wait until they find a good deal and then they will, will make it. But poor people, they're always under pressure and they're always making nonsense with their money and losing the last pennies <coughs> by signing the wrong deals, wrong contracts. So they're staying poor. When a person has faith, so then by connecting himself to that main pillar of his life, that it's the faith, that it is the main thing that is grounding us. It's the main thing that is stabilizing us. That's the real root of our soul. Because the faith is the only connection to the truth and also to the highest places of truth. For an example, you can understand with your mind only until a certain level. You can reach with your brain, with your wisdom, only as much as your mind, as your wisdom can hold. But faith is reaching to higher dimensions, to higher places that your brain, that your mind, that your wisdom cannot reach. You cannot and you are not able to believe in things that you know. I gave that example many times. You don't need to believe that that is a watch. You know that it's a watch. But to know more if it works or not, for that you need to believe me. I, I will tell you, yes, it works. It's set for the right time. Now you need to believe me. It might be stuck and you don't know that I'm just making up. You don't know. You should count on me. You should believe in me. So to believe, it's to a deeper layer, to a further distance, one step further. The faith in the Creator 
is making us able to achieve higher levels, closeness to Hashem in a deeper way, in a higher way than through our mind and our wisdom. Therefore, faith is such a strong tool that gives us an inner connection to deep places, to places that are giving meaning to our lives. A person with no faith is a person that can find himself lost in many situations, even if he is very knowledgeable, even if he is very blessed, very gifted, like we said, he will find himself in certain situations that his mind cannot reach. But faith is a blessing that has been given to us to use by the power of imagination. Everyone is visualizing his faith in his own way. He is illustrating his faith in his mind and the Creator, he is the one that should fulfill your dreams. He is the one that will answer your prayers. Even if your prayers are wild, even if you're hoping for like fantastic things, like even if you fly very, very high with your hopes, with your dreams, with your goals, the Creator, he is the one that will, that has the ability to provide and to give and to answer your dreams. Think about Moses, that Hashem, the Creator, opened the sea for him, 12 lanes for 12 tribes. Like, who would have come with that idea? Like, who would pray for something like that? The Creator gave it to Moses. Hashem is saying to Moses, Salachti ki I forgive them like you asked me to. Moses designed the salvation with his prayers because he was asking for certain things. And the prayer is the vessel to contain the bounty. Let's imagine, let's think about it. The Creator is providing, sending simple light. That's his kindness. That's his grace. And he is filling the world with that beautiful light. And that light is coming down to the world all the time. 24-7 there is light that is coming down. Now when you put a vessel, you can contain that light. When you are humble, when you are simple, when you are praying, when you have faith, when you put vessels, then you can collect the bounty. Now the prayers are vessels to contain the bounty and to put it into shape. What does that mean? For an example, when there's light comes down to the world, if one person will pray for money, he will say, please, Father in heaven, I need you to help me to pay my bills. I need you to help me to cover my expenses. I need you to help me to buy a house. I need you to fill my wallet that I won't be stuck without cash ever. Please, heaven. Please, Hashem. Simple words that he's using, creating vessels that will contain the light into the shape of the words of the prayer. If another person in the same hour, will ask for a salvation in Shalom Bayit to fix his relationship with his wife. And he will ask, please heaven, that we won't argue anymore, that we will understand each other, that I will care about her, like she hoped that her husband will care about her, that she will understand me, that we'll have a conversation, that we will learn how to respect each other, that we'll learn how to enjoy spending time together. He is putting vessels in the shape of the letters of the words that he's expressing while praying. Now the same simple light, the grace and kindness of heaven is coming down to the world and fitting itself like water into those vessels, into those cups that you created. Now when a person is humble, he's putting a deeper vessel. And when a person is expressing himself exactly based on his feelings from the most honest and sincere place of his heart, he is putting the right vessels that will receive the bounty and will answer his needs. 
If, for an example, a person is praying without faith and he's just talking words from the mouth and out and he doesn't really care, so then it's like a hunter, a person that holds a bow and arrow that doesn't have strength, doesn't have power to shoot the arrows and they're just like falling one feet in front of him, two feet in front of him. They don't have the power to reach the goal. But when you aim your heart, when you put your intention into the words of prayer, so then your arrows are flying in a, in a straight line and hit the, the goal, the target that you aim to. A prayer without intention, it's like a body without a soul. Those are dead prayers when you pray without intention. Many people can say, Oh, I hope Mashiach will come. We're waiting for the redemption to come. Oh, I want to buy a house. Oh, yeah, I want to be happy. Yeah, when I'm going to be happy. And like he is establishing his depression and exile while mentioning the, the opposite words. Doesn't really put no heart in it. Doesn't bring no energy to it. Doesn't bring no soul to put life into the words of prayer. But when people are experiencing a certain difficulty, a certain challenge, they must use, take with their wisdom those ex life experience and to put them into words and to pray and to express the emotions, the feelings that they're experiencing in life, to express them, to put them into prayers. And in which way? The most simple way is the best way, is the highway. The most honest way that you will express your heart with your own words. That you will say what you feel that is on your heart right now. That you will just be the most honest person that you can in that moment. And that will shape the prayers in such a truthful, beautiful way with so much grace and honesty that the Creator will take those prayers and will fill them, will fulfill them, will answer them and will send His simple light to cover all your needs and to take care of all your prayers, to answer them. There is another thing that is a known thing and very famous. Songs, prayers that are coming with tune, with certain music. Now, which music is the best music in the world? The music that you like. That will be the music that you will find yourself connected to. Means that when you will sing your prayers, and you don't need to be an opera singer for that, you just need to sing your own songs, even if they're so simple, even if they are repeating themselves over and over and over with the same tune, and you're just like mumbling your own simple request, but with a certain tone, with a certain beat, with a certain flow. When you do that, it's written that you are dressing the prayers like you dress the queen in front of the king with royal garments, with a wonderful dress, in a way that when it's written on Esther, the queen, that she dressed herself in her royal garments, so the king, Achashverosh, couldn't hold himself from talking to her. She came with such light. She was so well dressed and she was so honorable that he could not refuse to her conversation. And when she just smiled to him and told him few words, he was already into the conversation and motivated to listen and to hear all the way and to fulfill her request and to do as she wished. Only because that she was well covered in an honorable way. When you are covering and honoring the words of your prayer with a small music, with a small melody of your own, it doesn't have to be something that you compose. You don't need to be Beethoven or Bach for that or Mozart. You can also put music that you used to hear of different songs. It doesn't have to be only Jewish songs. It can be music that you feel connected to. 
there are sparks in this world and those sparks are bringing life into creation there is a reason why a certain song opened your eyes opened your heart opened your mind in a certain day to inspire you to cheer you up to push you there's a reason maybe it's hidden from your eyes from the eyes of your mind, like we said, because there are certain things that we cannot achieve with our brain. But you should believe that you are connected to that music and that you and that music has something together, something in common. Why? How? He knows how. He knows why. We don't know anything. We know that we need to follow our faith. We know that we need to express our faith. And the way to express the faith, to live life of faith, is through prayer. Because a believer, what is he doing with his faith? Except of building his connection to the Creator. That he knows that the Creator in his mind, in his faith. He knows that the Creator is above the creation. Now, he looked at himself and sees himself trapped in certain situations, dealing with certain difficulties. But when you know that you have a friend, when you know that you have a creator for sure, above the godly, the godly plan, someone that is in charge on all the systems, that runs all the factories, that he's the one that makes everything happen. When you realize that you have a connection with him, that you have someone to call to, that you have customer service finally. <laughs> it's the best thing in the world. You cannot be happier than that. And therefore, you're able to bring down salvations to the world. The real righteous people that made the most fantastic, amazing, inspiring wonders and miracles that are still waking us up to believe and to try and to give life a chance and, and giving us the strength and the motivation to continue were simple people. Were simple people that went and served the Creator in their own unique, simple way, in simplicity with truth. They were calling heaven. They were discussing their issues. If you will think a little bit and read a little bit about the life story of King David, the one that we know and believe that he is our Messiah, that he is our Mashiach, the eternal king of our nation and of the wide world, when we look at his life story, reading the book of songs, the Tehillim that he composed and wrote, when we're looking at the troubles and when we're looking at the way that he dealt with his troubles, the difficulties and the challenges, what did he do? What was he doing? He went and opened his heart and poured the world like water in front of the Creator. He just spoke and expressed and cried and begged and screamed and hoped and yearned and confessed and asked in every possible way. He was just being honest in his life journey. When he was poor, he was aware to the fact that he was poor and he was asking the salvation of a poor person based on his needs, on his lackings. When he was rich, when he was king, he knew how to ask the requests that were needed, for, required for him as a king. And he asked for the things that he needed. When he was chased into the desert and running from the unknown into the unknown, he was screaming and begging and hiding and asking for salvation and for extension for his life and to revenge his enemies and the ones that are trying to kill him. And he was not scared to ask any request that came to his mind because he realized that he has only one friend in the world. Only one in heaven that is supporting his destiny to be a believer. And the way to express your faith, to show your belief, is to ask from the one that you believe that can help you. The one that can provide the food and all the needs of our entire nation in the desert for 40 years that there's going to be a walking well full of pure water that is walking with the camp in circles in the desert of Sinai. 
Who can understand that? It's before the days of, of, of SoundCloud that the cloud was protecting us and, and we were installing all of our wisdom in the cloud. It was much, much earlier, before all those technologies came out to the world. And the cloud was already protecting all of our pictures and our own <laughs> memories in his archives. The Creator has this ability to provide and to supply all your needs. Today you have certain needs, you have your phone, you have your pictures, now you have the, this cloud that will hold your information. Back then they needed the cloud for different uses, it had been used for different uses. The Creator is able to make reality, because He's the one that creates the world. And this is why in the Holy Language of Hebrew we're saying Bore Olam the creator of the world. In the present, he creates your reality. Everything that you see, you think, oh yes, it's an old thing. It's not an old thing. He makes it to be as it is right now. If he will want it to disappear, to be vanished from the world, that you, where, what, where was I? Like, what, was, what were we talking about? He can take your memory, he can take the money, he can take the house, he can take people, he can take realities. He, the, some people even said that he uh, drowned lands in, under, the, under, under the ocean. You don't know what happens in the world. You have so many things that are happening in the same time, and the Creator makes it all take place in real time, in the present. Now, when you're realizing that, you realize that you don't have no other possibility really to lean on someone that will support you, that will provide your needs. Even if you go to talk to a doctor that is an expert, that he is a genius in, in, in his area, that he is a known and famous one, you need so much help from heaven to to like to be saved from his knife like you don't know how many wonders should take place when you're in the hands of a doctor even if he's the best doctor in the world he's a human being like if his wife just took his head off if they just kicked his son from college like you're dead you're dead meat and like and it's not no one's fault because he's a human being even if he's really the best doctor in the world People are people, and they will stay people. Even you know about yourself that you can try to be the best person in the world, and you have your moments that you are off, that you are in darkness, that you're lost, that you don't know how to function even in the basic things in your life. It's a normal thing that can happen. So even if you go and you pay to the best doctor, to the best lawyer, to the best whatever, you can find yourself in jail, you can find yourself in, in darkness, you can find yourself lost. So you need the support and help from heaven in any situation, even if you use your connections, even if you use your wisdom, even if you use your talents, your abilities, your power, your life experience, all the things that you can find, all the tools that have been given to you, you still need someone to supervise, to make it all happen, to make it all work. Even you eat something, you don't know what will be the end of that thing. You can never know. Only the Creator, He is the one that is Maflila, so that is Rofech Ol Basar, that He is healing our flesh, and that He is creating those digestion processes that are so amazing and so complex and makes us alive. You wouldn't be able in the world in a lifetime to command and to send the fibers to the right places and to the vitamins to the right places and the like every particle to go to that place and the cells to run and to make sure that won't be mistakes and won't like no one is able to do that. There is someone behind the scene that makes it all work. And when you realize that, that in the present, in real time, you have a connection, you have an inner connection to someone that really can change reality for you, that has the power to change reality and to help and to supply your needs and to back you up and to supply the things you need. When you realize that with a pure heart, with a pure mind, when you realize that, then it's strengthening and make your confidence so much stronger.
Suddenly you find yourself brave and powerful and you can deal with life and you have more tools for life and you find yourself facing challenges that once looked like the highest mountains, things that you cannot pass and suddenly you're passing them calmly in a relaxed way with a settled mind, with a happy heart, with a wishing and desiring soul to do more and to help other people in those topics that you once struggled with. But now suddenly you have power. Why? Because the Creator gave you those powers. Because the Creator came down to you and healed you from your emotional pain, from your traumas, from your lack of knowledge, and gave you a certain experience in life to build you and to stabilize you and for a cause. And that cause is to go and to share the faith and to shine it to others, to help other people believe in themselves. Because to believe in heaven, to believe in God, it's not a complete faith. Because it's only a one-side relationship. Okay, I believe in Him. I believe that He is good. But me, I don't know if I'm worth it. I don't know if I'm going to receive it. That's not a complete faith. A complete faith is when you understand that your parent, that your Father in heaven cares about you. And He's willing to feed you and to support you and to heal you and to provide all your needs. And He's making sure that you will be answered and that you will receive even the greatest things that you're not even hoping for, that you don't even realize how much He's helping and taking care of you. Like a little child. He's not aware to the plans of his parents, how many things they're doing for him. He doesn't know that they're paying the electricity bill also for him. He can't think about that. He doesn't understand that they're saving money for him for college in 10, 15 years. That they ne he never can dream about such things that the parents has in mind. And the Creator, that he thinks about our eternal life reward, means on the fact that we will spend eternity with him in heaven forever, for good, in a good way that we will be able to enjoy and to receive and to be complete over there with no shame, with no lackings, with no defaults, with no stains, with no cracks. Over there in a healed way, in a perfect way, in a balanced way, with the vessels to contain more and more and to grow eternally. For that He is bringing us to such a precise path that we have to walk in. And you don't know how complex it is to make sure that you will reach the final result, the, will, the one that you will want, the one that you desire. You can never imagine how every particle of creation is completing you. Because we can see only with the eyes. But the eyes are catching only the, the, the curtains of creation. We see only the outside layer of creation. Like when you read in a book, when you read in the Torah, you see the dark letters, you see Aleph, you see Bet, you see the shapes, you see A, B, C. You see the dark external outside of the letter when the letter itself is connected completely to the blank white page from within, from behind the curtain. And you don't see that connection. It's sealed and blocked from your eyes. But this is the glue that is connecting the dark fire, the outside layer that has been revealed to you, to its own source, to infinity to the white and bright and endless fire of heaven that is shining behind the scene, that supplies energy to the trees, to the flowers, put the sweetness in the fruits, flavors in all kinds of food, smells in so many perfumes and things that you can smell, and sights and colors and texture. All those things are coming because a certain spirit that lives and revives the creation from inside. Where is that inside? It's hidden. How you can reach it? When you believe. Only when you have faith. With your mind you cannot touch it. With your eyes you cannot see it. With your nose you cannot smell it. You cannot sense it in no other way except of through your power of imagination.
Use your faith and power of imagination in a holy way to dream and to hope and to pray and to ask and to desire. And by that, we are designing the redemption by our simple prayers, by our simple requests, by our holy desires for good, for redemption to take place in our lives, by that we are pulling that bounty that we are hoping for because we are creating vessels in the shape of our thoughts, in the shapes of our words. And when we are talking about $100, that is the vessel that we built. But if we're talking about buildings, about opening the oceans to, to 2,000 lanes, so now we're talking. So now we're bringing vessels that can contain huge amounts of bounty. Now we're delivering light in amounts that will be enough to cover and to finish the poverty from the world, the hunger, the plagues, the thirst, the ignorance, and we need to aim to the highest, highest places of them all. And they are spiritual. They're not physical. They are hidden. And where they are hidden, they're hidden in that place that you are burying, that you're hiding, that you don't uncover, that you don't let it shine. Your hopes, your dreams, that you were dreaming as a child, that you were dreaming as a teenager, all teenagers, me, I'm going to be a billionaire, me, I'm going to be so successful, me, I'm going to marry this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to climb, I'm going to fly. Everyone are dreaming. What happened? Everyone today are prisoners in the prison of their fears, of their anxieties, of their low self-esteem giving up on their own hopes, on their own dreams, and burying themselves alive while they still have a huge potential. But they don't believe in themselves. They don't believe that they are loved from heaven. They don't realize how important they are. They don't get their role in the redemption. They cannot understand how important they are and how gifted they are in that amazing role of designing the redemption. That your prayers will be prayers that will bring down bounty to the world. You don't have to experience it. You don't need to feel it. You don't need to see it. Some things are better to be hidden. Some things has blessing when they are covered in many, many layers. It's the respect of King of all kings that he will be hidden from our eyes. If we could have seen him completely and to know everything about him, so what would be the difference between him and us? If we can catch him, if we can grab him, if we can understand him, means that we can contain him, means that maximum he's in our shape, in our size, in our measure, and not more than that. But when he is endless, that's his greatness. When he is above our minds and above, above this world completely, and this world for him is like a, 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 a tiny piece of, uh, how do you say, grain? Grain? Grain. Like, I wanted to say. Smachol. Smachol. Sand. Like it, but how do you say one? A grain of sand. A grain of sand. Crumb. Okay. <laughs> this world is nothing compared to his greatness. That he's above physicality. When we're realizing that, when we're bringing that understanding down to this world, by that we are breaking the limitation of this world. We are removing all the obstacles. We are creating a reality that everything can happen. That every great thing that we will pray for will take place. Because if you would say with your life experience, okay, you know what? I will, let's say for an example, I want to write a Bible. Like the Bible, I want to write a book of theories. If you never experienced those wonders like Elijah the 
prophet is flying on flaming chariot with flaming horses up to heaven. You never experienced that in your lifetime, right? You're not using LSD, right? No, so you haven't experienced that. So, without that experience, you wouldn't come and start like writing that if you haven't been inspired from something. Never watched a Fantasia movie like... like like, like um, um, all, uh, you never experience wonders in the world, so your mind will be limited, and your power of imagination will, will also has its borders, and you will write some boring novel with no excitements and with no, no great redemptions. But people that really experience those experiences in their lifetime and testified on it, and told it, and they had students, they had followers, they had believers, people around them saw that with them, and testified on that as well, and there are no contradictions on, on, on how truthful the source of knowledge is, it's a known thing, it's been seen in publics, huge publics saw those wonders, Fire came down from the sky, the sea really been opened, and the whole nation went in dry land between the, the walls of the sea. And like, you have testaments on those things. By that, it creates and built the power of faith in your own mind. Now you can read the verses, you can read the stories about your ancestors, and to say, hey, you know, it can take place in my life as well. And then it's inspiring you to go and to pray as well for those miracles to take place. But those miracles are also limited because they are part of the past. But the last redemption, the last salvation will be even greater than the one that happened before. Because when the Creator will complete our redemption, He will complete it for good. After the first redemption, we still had to go through some challenges. More exiled and more pain and more difficulties, destructions of the temple and the second temple. But after the third redemption, after the last redemption, there will be no more plagues, no more darkness, no more death, no more sicknesses, no more illnesses, no more weaknesses, no more poverty, no more lies. No more cruelty, no more anger, no more sadness. It is all about to end, all about to finish. And when we are realizing that, it gives so much space for imagination. It gives us such an inspiring opportunity to talk and to ask for everything, for huge, gigantic castles, houses with no end. To ask for all the good for everyone that all the prayers of all the people with all the hearts will be answered, that everyone will receive what he wishes for. And it leaves so much space because it can all fit together because there are no limitations of space and time anymore. Everything can happen. Are you waking up or am I talking to myself? What's going on? I hope I'm not alone in my dream, but like it's still, it's fun. I don't know. You're on board. Great. This is reality. This is not a fantasy. This is reality for a believer. A believer is a person that has a connection with someone that is above this world. And that one is above all kinds of limitations. He is able to make wonders and to create reality that we cannot even dream of. Things that are beyond our imagination. For an example, it's written in Bereshit that Hashem, the Creator, commanded the land, the ground, to bring out trees that will have the taste, flavor of fruits and also will deliver fruits, also will bring out fruits. Not only fruits that will be sweet and tasty, also that the tree itself means the branches, the trunk, the roots, will, the leaves will have the same flavor of the fruit. But the land didn't listen. She refused to follow that command for a certain reason, for a certain purpose. It was the right thing to do. But still, in the mind of the Creator, there is a tree that tastes like the fruit. 
When you come to take the fruit, you don't need to climb to the fruit. You can take the branch. You can enjoy the trunk itself and to eat it and to enjoy it and to have more inside of it than you can imagine. You wouldn't think about that. You're not Walt Disney to think about those things. Not everyone is having that great power of imagination. But if you will let your mind go a little bit, set yourself free, you will start dreaming again. You will start hoping again. And then you'll start praying again. And those prayers will be so inspiring, so sweet, so cute in the eyes of the Creator. He will love them. He will see how innocent and naive you are. That He will answer your prayers. That He will supply your needs. That He will give you everything you will ask. And especially in time of difficulties, and especially in times of challenges, when you're empty-handed and you don't have an advice, you don't have no, 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 no ways to save yourself, that's an easier test. It's supposed to be easier. Because over there, for sure that you need a Redeemer. There, for sure you need a Savior, someone to help you, because you're stuck. And you don't have another option. You don't have opportunities. You don't have how to save yourself. So immediately you aim your heart to heaven and express. And again, the Creator is close to those ones that are calling Him with truth. Truth means the simple words that will express what you feel. That's truth. Truth is not Kabbalistic concept. Truth is truthful. It's to be honest, it's just to say what you feel. It's not to pretend, it's not to fake, it's not to act. It's just to be who you are. And when you are like that, you're bringing Him to be there with you. means that His blessing will hover upon you, will shine upon you. He will walk with you in the valley. He will walk with you while you're climbing the highest hills and mountains. He will help you to cross the sea and to overpower the hardest challenges of life. And there is a story in the Gemara on a person that passed away and looked back on his life and he saw footsteps of him walking alone on the sand of the sea. And he asked the Creator, why in those hard times of my life I saw my, my footsteps that I was walking alone? Why I couldn't see another pair of footsteps of your footsteps walking there with me? So the Creator answered to him, The footsteps that you saw were my footsteps. I was carrying you on my arms. And I was carrying you. You thought that you're walking. You thought that you have the ability. Like an innocent child, the things that he's able to walk. And yeah, I'm going to be a millionaire. Yeah, I'm going to buy that house. Like me, like basically. <laughs> and my wife, she suffers. You understand? Like she's suffering. <laughs> Pray for her. Like she's married to a kid. <laughs> Father in heaven takes care of us, takes care of us and carrying us and pushing us through all challenges. And we think, oh, I survived. Oh, I made it. You didn't make anything. You've been saved in miracles after miracles, wonders after wonders. You making phone calls and no one answers. And in the last moment, someone else is calling you and bringing what you need. How does it happen? Unless someone behind the curtains is planning everything for you and supplying things for you. And even if we do need to go through different poverties and challenges and, on, on, and embarrassing moments and moments of struggle and the feeling of loss and despair, despair, all those things are building certain shapes inside of us to design our vessel in a humble shape. That we will feel the pain of our beloved ones. That we will be much more sensitive to issues of our friends. That we will be connected to our surroundings. That we will have a heart. Because our hearts look like a desert, dry, with no life. And only the truthful soul is from within waking us up to life. 
Believe in yourself. Don't give up on your dream. Only the voice of the real righteous ones is keep on hitting our deaf ears and waking us back to life. You're not a dead person. You're not too old to succeed. You're not ugly. You're not stupid. You're not poor. You're not sick. You're not lazy. You're not all those foreign and negative things that you think about yourself. You're not all that darkness that the evil inclination is covering you with and breaking your self-esteem with. You're not gifted, you're not blessed, you're not talented, you don't have a chance, you're not going to make it, for sure you're going to fail, and on and on and on. All those negative and poison voices are the voices of the Yetzirah, of the evil inclination, that is a liar, that is coming to distract you from the path of truth, that is saying that there is one God. And not only that He is life and exists, that He loves you too. The belief in Him, the faith in Him starts with your faith in yourself. That you realize that I have a Creator. I have that one that loved me so much to show His love on me. The one that gives me so many opportunities. And like we said in the beginning on Abraham, on Abraham Avinu, the faith that you hold, that simple faith, that power of understanding that there is a Creator, is the greatest blessing of them all. Because the fact that you believe is a result of His will to open your eyes to see Him. Because when He wants people to be blind and not to see Him with the strongest evidence of them all, they won't catch the message. No matter how many hours you're going to drill their minds with arguments and proofs and evidence, they're going to walk away. I remember myself once, I had such a success with, with, in, with a student of mine. I talked to him for a couple of hours. I saw in his eyes that I made it, that I helped him to kick all the husks and all the coverings, all of his negative thoughts. I gave him the strongest proofs for every doubt he had. The Creator helped me with such amazing words and, and I, I, I cleaned the table for him completely. But one minute after we finished talking, he just put it all down the drain. He just threw it all away and went back to his life. And for me, it was a greater success because I realized that you need to have merit from heaven. It's not my responsibility to save you. I can try. I can do the best I can. But it depends on you. If you will want, you will have. If you will not want, you will lose. You can drop the most precious diamond in the world. You can destroy the best relationships in the world. You can be ungrateful to the people that helped you the most. You can destroy every good thing that's been given to you. But you can also appreciate every crumb, every tiny piece of your puzzle, even if not complete at all, even still lacks so many things in your life. You can be so close to the Creator and to recognize the good. You can accomplish so much by looking and investigating and seeking and digging for sparks of truth, of hope, of amazing things and inspiring that are happening in your life on a daily basis and in the life of all of your surroundings. And to recognize the live and existing Creator that walks with us in our camp, inside the houses, inside His people, in your thoughts, in your hopes, in your dreams, in things you see, in things you hear. I start to feel that I'm talking like you. I don't know, like you... you it's, it's you. Yeah. I'm listening to you. But, but, but I, I'm receiving something from you as well. <laughs> when you believe, then you build a vessel for the Creator to answer your faith, to answer your desire, your holy desire. When you pray, you build a vessel for the bounty to take place 
and then you can carry it, you can enjoy it. May the Creator give us all a very high and solid self-esteem to understand our greatness that He created and built and designed us in His shape with His amazing beauty treasured inside of us. And may He help us all to stand and pray and that all of our prayers will be answered in no time. Amen. Can you heal us on? Thank you. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.